love made a way. That's the message. Love made a way. How powerful is love? You've seen God's love at work in your own life. You have seen God's love and the power of love in the lives of others. You've seen forgiveness and you've seen reconciliation. And God's love is more powerful than what we've seen here. The question I want to ask this morning is, are you able to forgive others when they've hurt you? Love made a way. Love is powerful. Are you allowing God's love, that power to work through you, to show love and forgiveness and reconciliation to others? Would you be able to forgive someone who murdered your loved one? We've heard stories through the years of that difficult uh, way. And it's hard. Twenty-seven years ago, I don't think I've ever showed a picture of Michael. I thought I wouldn't cry. Vicki and I had to forgive the doctor who misdiagnosed Michael's heart condition the day after Christmas. This is, well, the 24th, as you see, that's a clip off of the old camcorders. Just a few hours after he was at the doctor the day after Christmas, being air cared to Cincinnati Children's Hospital, I'm not for sure how many days, weeks it was later that we sat down with that doctor and another doctor to forgive them for misdiagnosing. People said, oh, you should sue. What good would suing do? Wouldn't have brought our Michael back. It was just better to forgive. Love makes a way. I know it's hard. But love made a way. Several years ago, there was a national news story about forgiveness. In church shooting, a man walked into a Bible study and then killed nine individuals. Just two days after that, they were in the bond hearing, and one by one, Those who chose to speak at the bond hearing did not turn to anger. Instead, while he remained impassive, they offered him forgiveness. And they said, we're praying for your soul, even as they described their pain through their loss. Nadine Collier, whose mother, who was 70 years old, had been murdered by this young man, looked at the young man and said... I forgive you. You took something very precious from me. I'll never talk to her again. I'll never, ever hold her again. But I forgive you. Would you be able to forgive? Now, I know some of you have walked through those tragic waters and had to forgive. Working through forgiving. But even as Christians, we find the ability to forgive kind of unbelievable to hear that, to go, I couldn't do that two days after my mother was murdered, to look at the person who murdered her and said, I forgive you. But love made a way. That's the message of the baby in the manger. That's the message of Jesus on the cross. That is the message of an empty tomb. Love made a way. Love made a way in the hard times of forgiveness and reconciliation. What's easy sometimes to be a Christian, other times it's difficult to live out what Christ has asked us to do. And it's in those moments that we have to remember that love made a way. He made a way for us 
and His grace, and He makes a way for us to love and forgive others. Because Jesus was born in a manger, we have the ministry of reconciliation. We are to offer forgiveness in our pain and not seek revenge. When we love and forgive like Jesus, those around us will see the power of Jesus. And they'll begin to understand what the love of God truly is. And they will want to follow the way that he has made. Why do we worship a baby in a manger? Jesus was prophesied to be the Messiah to come. And he came to bring peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Luke 2, 13 says, Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rest. There is peace. There can be peace between you and I. There can be peace between you and your enemy because love made a way. Jesus came to bring peace. Peace between God and man, but also between man and man. Jesus came to die on the cross to bring us forgiveness of our sins. So since we are forgiven, we need to forgive others. And that begins with love. 1 John 4, 19 says, We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and we'd all say, I love God, right? Listen to the riff. Yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Love our neighbor. Sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes it's hard to love the person that lives in the house with you. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. If you refuse to forgive someone who hurt you, you are saying you hate that person. God is a God of love, not hate. But what happens if we hate? What happens if we refuse to forgive? Matthew 6.14 says this, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And the same thing is said there in Matthew 18. Unforgiveness is a scary thought. In Christ, we can forgive others. That is why we worship a baby in a manger. That is why we worship a Savior on a cross. Because love made a way. God's love made a way. Now let, let's let God's love make a way in us. I was talking to someone this week, not from MCC, so don't try to guess who, who it was. He said their family didn't get together for Thanksgiving, the full part of the family. And they're not going to for Christmas either. You know why? Unresolved conflict, hate, hurt, stubbornness, pride, selfishness. Sound familiar? Too often it does. Because you think, think, well, Jim, why are you preaching about forgiveness on Christmas? That's why. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and we need to have peace with those whom we're close to, our family. And that means we have to forgive because love made away. God wants us to forgive each other. And it's our job to take the first step Quit waiting for the other person. As a Christian, it is your responsibility. And I know you don't want to hear that. It's the other person's job. Matthew 5.23 says this, Therefore, 
If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar first and go be reconciled to them and then come and offer your gift. Maybe I should have said this at the beginning of of worship. You come to offer a gift to worship. And if you think, oh, wait, somebody's got something against me, you need to leave church. Uh Uh-oh, first time preacher ever tells you to leave church. Leave church and go reconcile with that brother or sister. Matthew 18 says the same thing. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. I mean, it's, it's about going and talking and dealing with a difficult circumstance. Be ready to forgive, to love. Love's hard way. It's hard. It was hard for Jesus to leave the glories of heaven, to become flesh in a womb for nine months, to be born as a baby in a manger, to live in this sin-filled world, to die on an old rugged cross. But love made a way. His love found a way. And Jesus loves you and I. And he doesn't want us walking around in bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts. We know we've walked that way and it's miserable. So try a different way. Love's way. Because love will make that way. Love made that way. God's love made a way for us to love each other and to forgive each other just like he loved And forgave us. So the question, do you need to receive God's love and forgiveness today? Maybe you go, well, I can't love others because I don't know the love of God. Well, today is a day that you could accept God's love. If you want to talk more about that, come as we sing. But maybe today, as a Christian, you need the support of others To do what you know you've needed to do is to go and to forgive someone, to work through that difficult relationship, and to forgive. Because Christ has already forgiven you. So what decision do you need to make this morning as we sing? We'll pray, and then we'll sing. And if you have a decision or need prayer, please come as we sing. Father, thank you for your forgiveness. When we first accepted you, we we relished your forgiveness. But now it's kind of become old hat. We take it for granted that you forgive us. And sometimes that's why it's hard for us to forgive others. We think their offense against us is so bad. And in many cases it is. It seems from a human mind it is unforgivable. But Father, through you, through your example of love and forgiveness, it's a better way to forgive. Help us to love others. If we say we love you, that we will love others, even who have hurt us, to give forgiveness. So, Father, challenge us today. Bring to mind those who we need to forgive. And that you would open their heart and our heart that we could bring about reconciliation. Father, because we want to honor you. Thank you for your forgiveness and your love in the name and the power of Jesus.